Good morning, everyone. I greet you in the name of Jesus the Christ and extend a special welcome to our guests. As we gather on this beautiful fall Sunday, I just want to r- remind folks I was told we do have some pumpkin pies available if you would like to take one home today. Um, I think you could talk to Patty probably after church, or I'm not sure who else is able to sell pies, but <laughs> and uh, I know Janice is here too, so. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to take one of those nice pies home. And as we gather in the spirit of worship, I offer these words from the psalmist who says, Come, let us sing to the Lord and make a joyful noise who is the, to the rock of our salvation. So let us be in the spirit of worship. I invite you to rise if you are able and join with me in our call to worship. And you'll notice that there are parts for men and for women here, so it's a little different than we normally do. Christ is like a single body which has many parts. Therefore, the foot cannot say, Nor can the ear say, the eye cannot say to the hand, nor can the head say to the foot, if one part suffers, if one part is praised, 
Together we are part of Christ's body. Let us sing together our hymn number 50. join our voices in our invocation of the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, if we came to your house, we would find the door open because there is no limit to your hospitality. If we came to your house, we would see people who never thought they would be allowed in had entrance been by merit rather than by your gracious invitation. So as we gather in Jesus' name, let the characteristics you cherish become evident in all we do and share together. Reveal within this community what we must do, what we must hear to offer your extravagant welcome. In Jesus' name we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. Let us greet one another with Christ's hand of peace or whatever you are comfortable with. <laughs>
couple of our te- both of our texts today come from uh, Old Testament and the Gospel, and we find situations. One, uh, which is a situation of exile for Israel, and the other is someone who is kind of uh, exiled in a sense, in the way, in the sense that he's he's blind and he's a beggar. And so he's kind of frowned upon uh, in society. So both of our texts kind of talk about outcasts and their life in the world. So our first text comes from uh, the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31. And I invite us to listen for the word of God. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim Give thanks and praise and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd as a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock of the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never again languish. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. And now we meet Jesus on the road to Jericho. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a loud crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man saying to him, take heart, get up, he's calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. And Jesus said to him, go, Your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. Amen. I got my COVID booster shot yesterday. Never thought saying something like that would be an exciting thing in one's life. But as I was sitting there, and where I got the shot and you had to sit for a bit like you had to when you first got the vaccine. I was thinking about all the, all the things that we've been through in the last year. I mean, everyone has faced COVID in their own way, but we've also, here, here we are, we're, we're gathered in worship. Yes, we're wearing masks and we're trying to, you know, be careful and take care of each other, but we've found ways to thrive and to connect with each other And so I think that I would see this day as a blessing. 
And I, I believe that all of us can look back in our lives and remember other times where we came out on the other side of a very difficult time. I, I, one of my biggest memories over the last 10 years or so is the hurricane that came through in 2010 and then Hurricane Sandy. And we, we had the bridges knocked out here in town and we Hurricane Sandy, we were out without power for like six days. So just being able to take that first shower when the power came back on, you just felt like rejoicing. And these, so these, these memories, these times of survival, of getting through things, they, they, they are cause for celebration. And they meant that we had survived. And that's just what Israel did. That's what Jeremiah is talking about today. Calling for songs of praise and all those images of you know, streams and lots of food and, and being welcomed home. And when D Jeremiah is usually a pretty dire prophet, he usually preaches doom and gloom and God's, God's uh, wrath. But here, when he starts singing about blessings, people listen. So if God's gonna bring what's left of Israel from the farthest parts of the earth, it's definitely cause for celebration. And Israel spent many years in exile in Babylon. And so the promise of being able to return was cause for falling down on your knees and weeping and just for joy. And we find our blind beggar has a reason to rejoice as well. Jesus is there in Jericho and he overrules the social norm, which was to ignore the beggar, keep, keep them quiet, keep them out of sight. And he brings that man forward, front and center. And in the other gospels, we know that Jesus has healed blind men, but they vanish into the background. But here, this man's given a name. Bartimaeus is finally noticed. He's not ignored. Instead of being kicked or spat at, he's given the gift he'd hoped, but he probably almost lost hope of having his sight. There are a couple of powerful things that are happening behind both of our lessons today. One is the unquenchable human spirit in action. We have this spirit within us to really truly never give up hope. Israel and exile did everything they could to maintain their identity. They, they remembered how they worshiped back in Israel. They remembered how to pray and they kept the commandments and as best they could. So in essence, even while they were far away from their homeland, they never gave up on God. And God never gave up on them. Their faith was their hope. Now Bartimaeus, we don't know about his, his faith. He probably was a Jew, but because of his blindness, he was outcast, seen as uh, in those days, if you had some sort of a deformity like that or, or a, you know, a, a, a handicap, someone might call it, um, they, they would be considered an unclean person. No one would talk to him, no one would touch him. But so he could have sat on the sidelines when he heard the commotion in Jericho that day. Do you remember the story of the man, the lame man who sat by the healing pool of Siloam for 36 years, just waiting for someone to come along and pick him up and put him in the healing waters? Bartimaeus took his fate in his hands. He heard the ruckus, he heard the name of Jesus, and so he started a ruckus of his own. He begs, not for coin, not for help, but for mercy. And so when Jesus calls out to him and the crowd tell him to get up, he tosses off his cloak. He, of course, blindly runs forward, hoping he's going in the right direction. And what does Jesus say to him? What do you want me to do for you? That's an amazing question. As if Jesus, Jesus was offering him anything. And the only thing he asked was to let me see again. And his faith makes him well. And he goes off to follow Jesus. We don't really hear of him again. 
But the fact that he can walk off and follow Jesus and be part of that crowd, we learn that both Israel and Bartimaeus are liberated. Bartimaeus is liberated from blindness and from, from uh, stigma, which, which we know it follows society. You know, it's, it's an eternal thing. It's, there's always a stigma somewhere in society. And we seek to erase those. But Israel is liberated from exile. And of course, in our mind today, we know there are so many refugees who've left their own countries. They're exiled from their homes. Uh, they may never return. So we have liberation in our story today. Israel, Bartimaeus, they could never really be part of the society where they lived. Israel and Babylon and Bartimaeus right among his own people. And their lives, of course, then, if you can't live the way that you, you know, that you've grown up with, your life is limited. And now Israel and Bartimaeus are freed from what was keeping them down. They're free from the stigma. They're free from prejudice, for utter dependence on others. And likely, and especially in blind Bartimaeus's case, abuse. So as we talk about liberation in these stories, I invite you to think about what you might need to be freed from. If you were freed of that one thing, or maybe it's more than one thing that you thought of, how might your life look different? How would your life be, or how would you live with such liberation? Being freed from dire circumstances is a cause for celebration. The realization of that, the, the living out of that liberation, it changes our lives. I know we've all heard stories. Uh, there's people who have had near-death experiences, and the folks close to them who know them have said that when they've returned back to their lives, they've seem to be kinder people, they, they focus on things that matter most when you have that close encounter. And we may have heard stories about people who've come out of prison or who've come out of addiction, who put their lives to work for, uh, to help other people who might be in at-risk situations or who are fighting uh, addictions in their lives themselves. We know people who survived cancer, car accidents, disasters. And I'm sure we can all name something or someone that we might know of. And those people have a new, we can see their new perspective on their lives. But coming through any of those things doesn't mean you don't have the scars or the marks of our experiences, right? So for the liberated Israel that Jeremiah sings of, their vision of restoration will always be linked to the memories of their time in exile. We see that in, in, uh, even in today, if you, we, we know there's Holocaust rem remembrance and but if you are part of, if you ever sit down to a Seder, or if you ever take part in any Jewish service, you know, you see that memory, that long memory of being in exile, the mem memory of disaster for them. They see themselves always as surviving that, and their trust in God to see them through whatever comes their way. And it's true for, blind, the, for the once blind Bartimaeus. His life is no longer the same because he's free to do whatever he wants. And what does he do but choose to follow Jesus? So I think all of us should be able to see ourselves as survivors because we have survived, whether it was a horrible hurricane, whether it was cancer, whether it was, whether it's COVID, or any number of life-altering experiences, 
whether they're great or they're small, we're, we're all marked by the experiences we've been through. But we also are like Israel. We're like Bartimaeus. We, we're all, each one of us, the faces not of trauma or destruction, but we're the faces of hope. We may have been broken once, but we learn to bend. And, and the bending comes in uh, putting our trust in, in Jesus and in, in God to help us through all these things. We bend our lives and we take our steps on that path to follow Jesus. We place ourselves in the care of God and we welcome the Spirit in to lead us. Because when we do that, we find hope and we find grace. And most of all, putting our trust in God is liberating. It liberates us from all the things that keep us apart from God. And so I invite us today to walk out of our doors feeling a little taller in our, in our, in our stature or maybe a little lighter on our feet, knowing that with the trust that we have put in God, we have hope, we have grace, and every day can be a celebration. Hymn is number 555. Here, Savior, in this quiet place. have uh, prayer concerns, there is a, a prayer 
sheet in your bulletins and uh, I invite you to uh, place that in the offering plate as it comes around and the ushers will give those prayers to me to share with us today. Thinking about all the the healing in our lives or the ways we've come through on the other side and can look up and look out. Uh, it just, it, it is cause for celebration, but it's, it's cause for thankfulness. And so for any of those moments that you have, uh, you feel you've come through and you are stronger for it, let us give thanks to God in a generous offering as the ushers receive the morning's offering. present God, for the beauty of creation, for the bounty that we all receive, we give you thanks with the offerings of our hearts and our hands and our time. Bless these gifts and bless the giver, so that all may know your presence brings us hope and showers us with grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. to be in the spirit of prayer with me. How shall we pray today, Lord? There are so many situations, peoples, needs, joys, and problems that all clamor for our attention. But this day, O oh God, we begin with gratitude. Gratitude. And so we are thankful for the rich autumn colors, the falling leaves, the crisp air, and the bright colors of harvest. In the Southern Hemisphere, there is drought though, oh God. And so uh, we do lift up 
South America reliant on the Amazon rainforest. And so we pray that you would open our eyes and our minds and our hearts to our responsibility to the planet that you have entrusted into our care, O oh God. And we are thankful for, we know rain is coming and it is filling half empty reservoirs in the UK. And yet some places have too much rain causing floods. And so we lift the people of those countries like India and Nepal to your care. We turn our hearts to our personal prayers to you, O oh God. Lifting up Michael's sister, Doreen, who is back in the hospital and been in the ICU. We pray for your healing for her and be with all those who are caring for her. And we lift up the Noonan's niece, Brittany, as she struggles with the loss of her father. We pray for Elizabeth's mothers and sister Janet. Uh, uh, our prayers for Juliana Hinkson, who has passed away. And we pray for Janet, Elizabeth's sister, who's recovering from surgery. We pray, O oh God, you be with all of them in their loss and in their healing. And we lift up to you Don Ouellette, who's going to be having a knee surgery this Thursday. Be with him and be with Melanie. And we give you thanks that it is a, a time for celebration in the Gattery household, as Eli will turn five tomorrow. And of course, oh God, we, we pray for victim of, victims of the constantly erupting volcano on the Canary Islands. Pray, O oh God, for all our brothers and sisters who share our humanity and people your earth, O oh God. And we pray for uh, the people in Afghanistan, especially the women, a country of deep culture and learning, and yet only it's the only country in the world where girls and women are barred from education. And so we give thanks and pray protection for those who bravely stand up to oppression, even at the cost of their liberty and even their lives. Remind us, O oh God, that the world and all that is in it belong to you and that we are all under your care. And so, as we are under this wonderful dome of your care in a sacred space, we come to you with all our own personal thoughts and prayers. And may you see deep within us for those prayers that have no words. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers and continue to remind us that each one of us is created in your image. Remind us to give thanks for all of our blessings and hear our thoughts and our prayers and our concerns for those who may not even have some of what we are blessed with. May we follow in Christ's footsteps and meet whatever needs each one of us is able with the gifts that you have given us.
to meet. We place ourselves in your care, O oh God. We look to you for your guidance. And we celebrate the small and great ways in which we have come through difficulties and are given your grace and hope to live our lives. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We hope you'll stay with us for coffee and fellowship following worship. Uh, I know that the deacons have made coffee for us. And our closing, and let us join now in our closing hymn, number 579, Great God of Earth and Heaven. Let's go into the world doing what God requires of us, living with kindness and justice and walking humbly with our God. Let us go in peace. <laughs>